Right everyone, welcome back to here. Thought I'd do a video on, uh, well, injuries with air rifles, I suppose you'd call it. Um, Weapons and Stuff 93 did a video recently about um, air rifles springing back on you, you know, like the old bear trap thing. Um, and I've actually had that injury, so I thought I'd just tell you about it. Um, the other thing is Sarah Wellen mentioned about uh, air rifle beginner's guide sort of thing. So I'm probably going to do that as well later. Um, but this one, this is just purely about how a gun, on our brake barrel air rifle, can spring back on your fingers or hands and injure you. Uh, probably quite rare for it to happen and this gun is actually faulty and that's what happened um, I'll try and take some pictures of the scar so you can actually see it um, you may be able to see it on camera I don't know but um, I'll tell you what happened and then I'll show you the scar if I can I reckon if I take a picture that'll work but anyway this is the actual gun that did it it didn't look like this it was, I've done it up a bit um, re-blued it, redone the stock and all that. And it is an old Slavia 624, which is like a, I think it's from the 60s or 70s, something like It's an old gun, little tiny little thing, probably only four foot pounds, five foot pounds, I doubt it's even. It's not very powerful anyway, six foot pounds at most. Um, well, anyway, I was about eight. I was definitely from between the age of eight and 11. I was still in what we call middle school in England. Uh, so I can remember being at school, looking at the, uh, the handle bandage up, looking at the stitches. Um, so eight or 11, between that age. And I was in our shed and uh, never really touched an air rifle apart from once when we were down our dad's yard he loaded one of these guns up for us and then held it and then let us shoot it while he sort of held it at the same time but um we was in the shed just playing around he must have bought these back or something i don't know they were in the shed anyway and i just picked it up he didn't even know i had it i picked it up cocked it And I must have had my, try to hold this at a safe, I must have had my hand somewhere here. And um, basically, it just sprang shut on my hand. Just, I'll try and show you. Like I said, I don't know. If not, I'll take a picture. But um, there's a square shaped scar just there. That's the exact same shape as the catch there. See that there? The scar I've got is the exact same shape as that. So there's one there and there's sort of more scar there. I had to have seven stitches in my hand. And what happened was, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but this gun doesn't stay cocked. There's spring missing in the trigger. See that will work now. But um, I reckon what had happened is I pulled it down and it had just cocked. It, you know, just it had just caught. And then I don't know what I was doing. I can't really remember, but I must have had my hand near there somewhere, and it sprang shut, cut my hand open. Now this is a weird thing. A lot of people don't believe this when I say it, but I don't know if it was the adrenaline or something or whatever. But I actually had no pain in my hand at the time it happened. And I remember it happening, sort of jumping, oh, what's happened? Looked up my hand, saw like a hole in my hand, going up to my dad and going, look what I've just done. And then he saw that I needed stitches, said, go upstairs and wash your hand. You know, go to the bathroom, wash my hand out. And that seemed to upset me more than anything, like the water going into my hand, you know. 
And then I uh, went to the hospital, had the stitches and all that. I can remember having a tetanus injection. So I, was, I remember weird things. Now, I don't know if this was a different time. I was just saying, I remember one time, I ran into a fork once, it stabbed into my ankle. I had stitches in. But what I was going to say was, I remember one of the times being at the hospital, having a tetanus injection in my ass, <laughs> in my ass cheek. Again, young kid. Because I can remember the doctor, not the doctor, the nurse saying, does he dress himself? And my dad saying, yeah. And she said, oh, his pants are inside out. <laughs> it's weird how you remember strange things. Um, yeah, so always beware. This is where the safety tip comes in. If you're ever loading an air rifle, the two methods are to open it slightly like that, put your pellet in, because that, that can't move like that. Put your pellet in, then cock it. Or, the other one to do is cock it, and then hold it up against your body, or whatever. Or, you know, there's a lot of techniques, but as long as you've got to hold that barrel down, and then load your pellet in. But I sort of do it like that, I hold it up against my sort of hip, load the pellet in. I'd always do that. And obviously, you know why, but I've, ever since that happened, I'd always done that anyway. But I always try to tell people, hold the barrel down. If I do see a lot of people, yeah, it don't matter, it's all, it all depends up to you. But, you know, you don't know if that gun is fault. I didn't know, my dad didn't know. You know, and that was like a little, um, you know, I think it was about four foot pounds or something. Twelve foot pounds could do a lot more damage, I reckon. So yeah, that's one of the, um, that is something to be aware of with an air rifle. Trapping your fingers in the, uh, in the breech there. Right, I hope this gives some people some sort of safety ideas. All, basically always hold the barrel down when using a, a brake barrel. That's all I can say really. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found the story interesting and helpful. Alright, don't forget to visit my blog, link will be down below there, and I've got Twitter and that, but I don't really go on Twitter anyway, but it's there if you want to follow it. It'll, it'll always have new, every time I do a new video, it'll go on the Twitter, so you'll always know it's there. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video, see you later.